Our agenda for today, um, while presenting webinars to you, will be, um, I give you a short introduction first, uh, then a brief overview of the uh, webinars project. Then we will have a look on uh, yeah, how to develop an application for the webinars platform. Then we will move on um, and have some insights on um, how we actually managed uh, to get webinars ported to Android, as uh, this wasn't quite trivial. We will conclude with the outlook. So uh, I'm working for Fraunhofer uh, Focus, which is a research uh, society, um, one of the biggest in uh, Europe. Um, my boss says it's maybe probably the biggest. I had never have checked this. Um, we are situated here in Berlin, and um, yeah, I'm working for uh, the future applications and media department there, where we uh, concentrate our research on uh, cross-platform applications, smart media, and uh, personalization. So, um, to motivate why we, uh, yes, um, started to research on, on, on the webinars project. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yes, we, today, nowadays we live in a world where we have more connected uh, devices than uh, people exist on the earth. Then we have an increased uh, parallel usage of uh, connected devices. And um, yeah, devices getting more powerful. And uh, yeah, even um, though we have all the new, all, all new kind of per connected devices uh, providing um, access to web-based services, internet services, um, they kind of do not interplay with each other, but coexist. So um, there is a bunch of problems, which. Uh, uh, mainly are um, diversity of different device types, uh, fragmentation of platforms, um, even within a platform, like we know from Android. And uh, yeah, when it comes to application development, uh, we often have uh, developers manually handling uh, stuff like secure communication, privacy protection attempts, stuff like that. All this was very... Um, unsatisfying, so uh, we did a proposal for the webinars project and as uh, from our um, focus we uh, um, yeah, we got this project and it's, it's running uh, since two years. So what is uh, webinars? Webinars is an open source web platform for running applications across multiple um, yes, devices. And it is uh, supported by a uh, strong consortium. Um, many of these uh, partners here, like uh, BMW, um, Sony, Samsung, uh, started from the beginning on. Uh, we got, uh, during the runtime of the project, uh, more and more interested parties in uh, joining and participating. So, um, Fabinos, um, basically, uh, three main um, key points here. Webinars based on open standards, then uh, open source. The, this project is, uh, has started as an open source project and we uh, completely moved our work and research on this project to um, yeah, the public domain. So all results in terms of generated specifications, um, implementations are publicly available. And um, yeah, the result of this um, research leads into uh, uh, utilization of this platform in, uh, in conclusion with uh, open markets, open application stores, and the like. What we um, have delivered so far is uh, we are have implementation for five major um, device domains, like uh, TV, home media, desktop, PC, a mobile, automotive, and uh, Internet of Things, machine-to-machine -machine communication. We have ported the platform to eight um, operating systems. 
Um, we, uh, sp we have specified a bunch of uh, interesting APIs, like for example for the vehicle um, to get um, access to interesting data provided by the vehicle, for example, or the TV. Then we have a concept of uh, um, yeah, app store agnostic or um, vendor agnostic uh, um, yeah, um, application store. Then uh, from beginning on, we uh, tried to uh, design the Webinus platform uh, secure. As mentioned, we are uh, working in the public domain and uh, there are available uh, SDKs. The complete uh, platform is available as, a as download on GitHub. We have a developer portal and uh, run from time to time um, application contests uh, to increase the community. So um, how is the um, platform positioning of Webinos? Webinos does not understand uh, itself as a competitor to uh, co uh, existing um, platforms. So it rather um, mediates between the platforms. So uh, don't be fool fooled by the name Webinos. Uh, this OS in the back, it has nothing to do with operating system. It's not an oper operating system on its own. It's rather an application execution environment. <coughs> and um, what is, yeah, Probably the most important key feature of Webinars is that it allows applications and devices to securely discover um, each other and make use of um, services uh, they provide. Um, during this project, we have um, introduced a key concept, uh, which is the concept of the personal zone. A personal zone mainly um, consolidates devices, users' devices, um, data, and services in a, uh, a zone, which is uh, here not meant uh, uh, in, in an area sense, but in, in it's a uh, virtual um, zone, which incorporates uh, all those uh, entities. The key features here is uh, interoperability. So we have um, devices communicating with each other um, across different platforms, across different device types. Uh, we have um, uh, easy development as we set on um, web technologies in the first. Um, then we have uh, portabili portability. So um, main parts of uh, the um, platform are implemented in a way that um, it has not to be uh, rewritten from scratch. Um, later, a little bit more on that. And uh, we uh, uh, re-enable control over um, assets users have, have um, uh, yeah, regarding their devices and data. So uh, to visualize that, uh, we have, uh, um, yeah, Many of us have more than one con connected device, as the statistics says. And the idea is uh, to interconnect all those devices uh, in the personal zone and um, connect them with an entity we call uh, personal zone hub, which is um, always available and is a um, server-side agent for the user. Moreover, we have uh, on each device a component which we call a uh, personal zone proxy, which uh, connects to the hub and uh, provides access to um, device capabilities, for example, but as well um, enforces policies on the devices when it comes to um, service access. Yes. Um, the good thing about this, if uh, we have an, a network overlay um, um, situation like this, then uh, developing applications is um, um, eased. So we, ha we have just uh, um, devices um, con talking to each other and um, the applications are developed uh, with the plain web technologies, HTML, JavaScript, uh, CSS 
and using a well-defined set of uh, APIs. Um, how we do identify uh, uh, zones? We do it by uh, using um, URIs. And um, we have um, discovery and uh, authorization mechanisms, as well as synchronization me mechanisms. Um, to give an example, um, probably I, at some point I would like to have my geolocation service used by um, some of my other devices. And uh, the geolocation, geolocation service uh, is provided by my mobile phone. Um, and probably I have, uh, yeah, I, I, I define this wish uh, once on one device and I would like to have it uh, synchronized across all my devices. So uh, what we um, uh, try here to do is uh, using a synchronization mechanism between all personal devices to, um, yes, uh, synchronize policies and, um, yeah, uh, user preferences on devices. Um, quick view on the ar uh, architecture so far. Um, the personal zone, uh, zone proxy is uh, implemented, complete, uh, implemented completely in using the Node.js uh, language, which is a JavaScript uh, server-side uh, language, um, which uh, enables for portability. So the only thing we need to do to get ported to a um, OS is um, to um, port the uh, node.js interpreter to this platform. Um, what we have here is an um, uh, application running in a, a widget renderer or uh, basically a, a generic web runtime, could be a browser. And um, this application communicates uh, with a, a personal zone proxy to um, uh, yeah, get services as well, local service as, uh, as well as um, remote. We don't make any difference here uh, when, uh, when, uh, when, yeah, when we look at the uh, implementation model. So when I request a service, uh, the service could uh, originate uh, on a remote device, but as well on my local device. Yes. Um, how do uh, we develop uh, applications for the Webinars platform? Basically, it is a three-step process. First, uh, we have an uh, application idea, uh, and we realize this with uh, well-known web technologies. Then we uh, analyze uh, which uh, services we, uh, we need. Um, we then um, yeah, make a selection of uh, APIs, uh, Webinars APIs we will use. And, um, the implementation model here is that uh, we develop the application against a virtual device, uh, um, abstract device. So um, this device comes with all the properties um, all my personal devices um, are providing. And anything else um, is uh, taken care of by the Webinars platform. Then we package the application, uh, host it somewhere, somewhere and download it uh, via um, our um, widget renderers and um, yeah, we can execute it. So um, to um, go mo more into detail for the second step, so uh, yeah, where we um, uh, use a specific uh, Webinars API, here we have an example where we um, um, initiate a service discovery on a, a device orientation service. Um, then after successful um, discovery, this service uh, is bound. And uh, if, it's, uh, if the resources are reserved and uh, the bound has uh, success, then we can use this service and uh, do meaningful um, things within our application. Uh, for this, I have prepared a small demonstration, which I maybe can show uh, after the talk uh, to interest it. Um, the idea here is that on my uh, laptop machine, I do a service discovery, uh, get the device orientation um, service uh, back 
uh, on, on, on my from my mobile. On my mobile, no um, active application needs to run. Uh, the um, yeah, the service is provided by the the proxy, which runs in the background. And um, after binding the service and using it, um, yeah, we can in this example use, for example, the uh, device orientation sensor in the mobile um, to I don't know rotate something on on on, on a different device. Oh, yes. Um, the exciting part uh, regarding Android uh, here is um, it wasn't trivial, trivial to um, impl uh, to port uh, Webinars to, to Android because um, we set on Node.js as interpreting language, which is not uh, yeah available out of the box for Android, so we had uh, to port it and. Um, uh, our solution was um, yes to um, build it as a, as a library and integrate it to uh, uh, to the Java runtime, uh, and then um, uh, we are we are not forced anymore to root the device. So this was very important. Um, for this uh, to to get used, uh, we have developed a Java bridge. Which enables um, yeah, to uh, call into the Android platform from the uh, Node.js framework, and uh, this allowed us um, yeah, to do the interplay um, uh, between the native API implementations on on the mobile device and uh, the um, platform communication synchronization uh, parts. Yeah, for more information, uh, uh, you can check out the um, a GitHub page of one of our project partners here uh, who uh, developed uh, developed uh, Node.js for Android in the A Node project. Um, yeah, and this is basically an uh, example for the um, um, yeah, sample application shown before. How um, on the one side it is used in within the Node context, and uh, on the other side uh, how it is um, yeah, interfaced. Uh, within the uh, on the uh, Java side here. So, uh, what is uh, basically the um, the outlook, or what is what are the next steps? Uh, we are in uh, um, second year of three years in this project. So, uh, by end of this year, this uh, project will uh, end. But uh, through our um, active um, participation and public participation, we hope uh, uh, to get um, the community uh, stick to this project. And by um, yeah, end of this year, we uh, plan to land the 1.0 version. Um, yeah, for those of you who are interested in this project, uh, you are kindly welcome to participate and um, yeah, port to uh, different platforms. Um, as well as uh, try out by building some applications for the uh, platform itself. Yeah. Uh, very recently, um, what we tried here is um, yeah, when when we developed the uh, WRT, uh, the web uh, runtime for the Android, uh, we uh, m like others used the web web view web view for that, which uh, is not such bad but uh, uh, could be improved. So a simple HTML5 test shows that here a uh, Chromium build or um, maybe in future the uh, Blink build will um, yeah, uh, perform much more better, which is um, important if competing with the native applications. Yes, so uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer.